Three days from now, voters in West Virginia head to the polls in the Democratic primary there. Being in the heart of coal country, of course, many of those voters are minors, and they're, well, not exactly thrilled with Hillary Clinton and her plans for their industry. I'm the only candidate which has a policy about how to bring economic opportunity using clean renewable energy as the key into coal country because we're going to put a lot of coal miners and coal companies out of business. Right, Tim? And we're going to... Voters there seem to be leaning towards Bernie Sanders, despite both candidates vowing an end to the traditional fossil fuel-based energy industry. Helping us take a look at energy policy, Democratic side of the race, Politico energy reporter Alana Shore. Appreciate you being with us. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Fair to say that Hillary Clinton's uh, words about putting coal miners out of business went over like a ton of coal in West Virginia? Absolutely. And frankly, she was already deep in the hole with these voters. Even union workers, which are typically part of the Democratic base, just don't like what the Democrats are doing on energy. So she really has very few fans to start with, and this made it worse. You think about states that are heavily energy focused states places like Wyoming, places like Kentucky, and then you get into Appalachia, talking about West Virginia, Pennsylvania, those kinds of things. Are the Democrats' policies, both of them, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, enough to switch traditional Democrat voters onto the Republican side? I would say definitely, especially when it comes to things like EPA regulations, which hit these guys right in the pocketbook, electricity bill-wise, and also put their jobs at risk if they work in the coal industry. All right, let, let's break down Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders' plans on what they want to do for energy. Both seem pretty hell-bent on ending fossil fuel-based energy as much as they can. Fair to say? It's, yes, that's fair to say. But it's important to note that Bernie has pushed Hillary very far left in this primary, farther than she really feels comfortable being. So she talks a Bernie-like game, but no one really expects her in the general to stick to this. Explain more on that. Well, what Bernie wants to do is quote-unquote ban fracking, which is not something that the president actually has the power to do. States like Texas and Oklahoma can and will continue to do it under the law. It's more of a rhetorical gesture showing his commitment to end all oil, gas, coal. Now, Hillary has sounded a lot like that, but when she's pressed, she doesn't really have specifics on how she would do it, and her advisors say, hey, 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 this is going to take time, basically pulling on the brakes. All right. Nevertheless, either one of these proposals, especially when you hear about Hillary Clinton talking about she wants to have every home in America powered by clean energy in the next four years, that ain't cheap. It, it is certainly not. However, it is doable. What that means in you know, layman's terms is basically 33% renewable energy in this country. Right now, we're around 15 at best in certain regions. So it's a huge change. It costs a lot of money, but Give it is achievable. Uh, at least $7 billion. Seven, Most seven, seven billion dollars somewhere in there. As you look at both of these, have either Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders learned from what you might call the failures of the Obama clean energy policies? In fact, they are continuing the Obama clean energy policies. And frankly, when you pull the Democratic base outside of these regions, the plan's pretty popular. They know the Democrats aren't going to win this region in November. They've basically given up on it. I mean, you'll still see this primary be meaningful for their policies, but they know they have no fans. So, so where does energy policy for the Democrats go from here? Because we, you, know, you hear this major disconnect between the traditional Democratic platform, if you will, which Bernie Sanders says, hey, look, climate change is the biggest threat to American national security, and even a lot of Democratic voters who will tell you, eh, I'm not sh really sure that's the biggest threat we face. Look, what it comes down to is the liberal base loves talking about this. Swing voters don't necessarily like it or agree with what, it, as you just stated, but they care far more about other issues people are talking about. So it's basically like a free gimme to the liberal base that they are counting on won't hurt them too badly with swing voters. In terms of it not hurting them too much with swing voters, right now gas is cheap relative to 2008. Big reason it won't hurt. Big reason it won't hurt. If all of a sudden that changes in the next six months, how do either Clinton or Sanders, whoever the nominee, how do they square what their policies are now that will drive oil through the roof and therefore gas prices through the roof with the traditional swing voter who says, I don't really care what you're going to do if gas is $2 a gallon, but if it's 4 I might. I guarantee you if we get closer to $4 a gallon, you will not hear a lot of critical things about fracking from Hillary Clinton, for starters. Alana Shore, uh, if gas is $4 a gallon, even if it's not, we'll have you back to talk about energy policy. Appreciate you being here. Thanks so much. All the best.